The sky was clear and a cool breeze blew over the village. Like every other day, the elders woke up to witness the beauty of their lives. Women folk lit the fires to prepare meals for the day. Smoke rose in wispy gusts from every house filling the air with an aroma of food which filled the village. Hachitok served with mashed pumpkin and tangra tom. Children played in front of the morong. Young girls swept the floor of their houses and their dormitories, preparing for the day's work and tilling the land hoping for a good harvest. The village, Kylie as it was called, signaled a sense of hope. As the village flourished from one generation to the next, it started practicing many rituals for good and for evil. One such ritual was held at the end of January, when the villagers offered sacrifices to evil spirits, who demanded a tribute of human blood to fulfill their thirst for the human soul. Whether they liked it or not, every year the villagers had to sacrifice a pure soul, a virgin girl with a pure heart, belonging to Earth Mother, a girl so spotless in features and so matchless in beauty that a man or a spirit would be besotted and satisfied with her. This ritual started at the time of their ancestors, and it continued with only a faint hope that one day a hero will show up and save all the beautiful maidens from their dreadful fate. There once lived a girl named Locaribole, whose beauty mesmerized the whole village. She had the purest of hearts and the wishes and blessings of all her friends. She was a fine weaver and handy in the fields. She was considered the most beautiful girl in her village, and many young men tried to impress her and win her heart over during the many festivals that they celebrated. She was a good dancer and singer who enchanted many men and women folk alike. Her long black hair was like silk in the moonlight. She had a beautiful long face with fair skin, without a single speck anywhere on her body. Flawless was her beauty that people from different villages came to see her charms. However, as an obedient child, she loved her parents dearly, making her the best of all the maidens in the village. Her unparalleled beauty, her personality, her skills at tilling and taking care of the household made her the most suitable bride who many young men dreamt of. Like generations in the past, the villagers continued with the ritual of human sacrifice. There was a spirit called Harabi or the Beast, also known as Tiger Spirit, which resided below the Hiriki, the customary gateway to the village. The villagers believed that the beast had to be appeased through sacrifice, failing, which the whole village would be brought to ruin by its wrath or due to some inevitable disaster. As the month of January drew to an end, the village elders had to find someone to offer for the sacrifice. It was the duty of the elders to entrust someone to carefully observe the beautiful girls in the village and choose one for the ritual. As the search started, they found no one with features perfect enough to please the beast. But as they reached the far corner of the village, there was a young woman who was as beautiful as the swan in the water, and her radiant beauty shone in the eyes of the elders. Not realizing that she was the prize of their village, they choose her to be the perfect one for sacrificing to the beast. When she was about to be marked as the prize for the beast, her parents came to the village's elders and begged them not to do so, as she was their only daughter and was treasured by her family and all their relatives. But the village elders didn't listen. Instead, they took her to be examined for the ritual. And they found not as much as a black mole on her body. As she was the purest of all the maidens in the village, she was marked to be bestowed to the beast at the ritual ceremony. Her parents cried day and night for their daughter till the day of the ritual. The news of the sacrifice spread like wildfire across many villages. An invitation for the ceremony was passed on. The beauty of Gaili village is going to be sacrificed to the beast. All people of repute as well as the best warriors of every village are invited to witness her beauty before she is bestowed to the beast. The news passed through 11 neighboring villages. On the other village, there was a young warrior called Nrimswang who was well known in all the neighboring villages because of his skills in hunting and defending his village from any kind of threat. He was the best wrestler and a brave warrior. He was smart and wise, and was considered the most handsome among the young men around. When he heard that the most beautiful girl from Gaili village was about to be sacrificed to the beast, he decided to rescue her from the ritual, but it was not going to be easy. The ritual had taken place for countless decades, 
and many a good and powerful warrior had lost his life fighting the beast. But as a young man, he was filled with remorse and compassion when he heard about the sad fate of the innocent girl from Gaili. He decided to risk his life for the sake of this unknown maiden. He sharpened his hengji as known as spears and heki, known as dao or machete, the weapons he would carry for his adventure and for his protection. Rimswang started the journey from his village. He crossed 11 villages just to witness the beauty of the girl and to rescue her from the tiger spirit. He walked relentlessly for seven days and nights till he reached Gaili. When he reached the village, the ritual had already started. The whole village had gathered to perform the ritual, bearing all their gifts and offerings to the beast at the village gate. As the villagers waited for the girl, he asked one of the villagers, Is this the woman? No, it's not her, said the village boys. Whenever a fair maiden passed by on the road towards the village gateway, the village boys would reply, No, it's not her. As he kept asking, a boy told Nrimzwang that, When the girl arrives, she will be clothed in a new shawl, and Mekala. On observing the crowd, he saw that there were many people coming towards the village. His eyes were caught by a girl who was escorted by her mother and father. On inquiring, he was told that she was the one. He grinned to himself. So captivating was her beauty that he was ever more willing to take the risk. The villagers brought and left their offerings near the village gate. They brought eggs, chicken, vegetables, fruits, and other produce of the village. Lokar Belay was made to take a seat surrounded by eggs and chicken, where the villagers covered her with a big wicker basket and left her sealing the village gate behind them as they went back inside. The young warrior hid himself above the gate, making himself comfortable as he lay in wait for Haraby to appear. There was thunder and lightning, and then appeared. At first it appeared with the size of an egg. The second lightning came with a flash accompanied by rolling thunder. The beast became even bigger, growing to the size of a chicken, then a dog. With each roll of thunder and each flashes of lightning, the beast grew bigger, the size of a calf and then a bull. And finally, the spirit revealed himself in his true form of a spirit tiger. As black as coal, the fear of darkness embraced its appearance. Now that the spirit had transformed itself into the image of a black tiger, it started devouring the eggs around the girl. The tiger licked its jowls after tasting each egg and licked the girl. Every time he licked the girl, she grew more enchanted by his spell. Caught in a trance, Lokaribale was laughing at the top of her voice like a mad person seeming to enjoy what was happening to her. She was not her real self. The spell of the spirit was making her behave as though she was crazy. When all the other offerings were finished, it was finally time for her sacrifice. But instead of attacking her, the beast toyed with her for a while as the young warrior observed the whole scene intently. When the time came for the spirit to eat her, he opened his mouth wide like there was no head attached to it. With that, Nrimswang took out his spear and blessed it, saying, O oh, mighty one, the creator, let this spear pierce through the mouth and come out of its anus. Lurking in the darkness atop the gate, he then threw the spear with all his might at the spirit. The spear struck the tiger just as he had blessed it, impaling it from mouth to anus. The girl was still laughing like a mad woman, <laughs> oblivious to everything around her. Nrimswang waited for the tiger to let out its last sigh to be sure that it was dead. He heard the buzz of a housefly. He asked the housefly to go and check whether the tiger was dead or just pretending to be dead. So the fly went into the mouth of the tiger and came out through its anus and stated that it was still alive. As he waited a bit more, there came a bee. So he asked the bee to go inside the tiger's anus, bite its throat and come out through its mouth. This time, the bee came out saying that the spirit was dead. After killing the spirit, Rimswang came down from his perch above the gate and chopped off the spirit's head. However, Lokaribale was still laughing hysterically. He tried to wake the girl from her stupor, but the spirit's charm was so strong that it was impossible for him to bring her back to consciousness. So he went and collected seven sticks and started beating her. Till the last stick, she barely realized what was happening to her. Then suddenly she came to her senses and asked him to stop beating her. Nrimzwang picked her up and they walked back together to the village gate. Nrimzwang had killed the Hekau, as known as the beast of the village. The girls of the village gazed in admiration as they walked to the main entrance of the village customary gate.
He shouted to the entire villagers, asking them to open the gate as he had saved both the girl and the entire village from the beast. In wild jubilation, he howled, As a sign of victory over evil, the entire population came to witness the glorious and historic day when the maidens of the village were freed from the cruel sacrifices. They were welcomed with songs, howls, and war cries. There was laughter everywhere knowing that the beast had been slain and the village was free of the human sacrifices. On witnessing this act of bravery, Lokrabili's parents wanted Nrimswang to marry their daughter, but he refused the proposal as she was young. Lokrabile parents insisted that he should stay with her for five years so that they could convey their gratitude by offering their daughter's hand. As a man of honor, he accepted this proposal and was gifted with new garments, necklaces, and new traditional attire by Lokaribale's parents. As the years passed, he grew to love Lokaribale. They get married, but as the heir of his own village, Rimswang did not take her to bed but lived with her as a protector alone. As the day of his return approached, he kept trying to get away from her. At times, he went for a chit-chat to his friend's house and spent the night there. His wife waited for him all night and found him in the morning either at a friend's house or at the morung. This continued for days. One day, he decided to leave for his village, so he started showering all the love he could ever offer on Wakaribale. Narimswang was so good to her suddenly that it made Lokaribale nervous that he may be planning to leave soon, but she trusted him anyways. And on the final night, Narim Zwang did not leave her sight but stayed with her all night. That morning, he rose before the sun was up. He took out all the clothes that had been gifted to him on their marriage and kept them by his wife's bedside. Before anyone could notice, he took his old attire from five years ago and started running as fast as he could to flee from the village and from his wife. He fled from Gaili, not because he did not love his wife or love the people around him, but out of his responsibility as an heir of his native village. As the bravest warrior of his village, it was his duty to stay in his native village and protect it at all times like he promised. Though he wished to honor Lokaribale's parents' wishes, his responsibility was leading and protecting his own village. As he fled to his village miles away, his wife ran after him with all his ornaments and clothes that he kept aside by her bed. With a tearful eyes, she asked him to stop. But he didn't look back because he knew that if he did, he might not be able to run away from his wife seeing her in tears. So he ran faster and faster. He ran past the eleven villages and crossed the big river called Nbaiki Ruki. Lokarabile also reached the river and came to a halt. She had been running for days following him, bearing his clothes and ornaments. But the river was too swift and the current was too strong. So she shouted at the top of her voice, calling Rimswang. Even if you can't turn around and see me, please spare a moment to glance at me through your arms. Rimswang turned and looked through the crook of his arm, and as he glanced, he saw her desolately dropping all his ornaments and his traditional clothes that her parents gifted to Nrimswang into the river. As she sang, Nrimswang, clear your pathway for me. I will chase you till the end. Left with no hope, Lokaribili wept bitterly and returned home to Gaili. Meanwhile, Nrimswang went to his village to take on the responsibility that had been entrusted to him long ago. To this day, there is a myth associated with the sparkling white stones you can only find in Nbaiki River. These stones are said to have evolved from Nrimswang's ornaments or clothes which his wife threw in the river when they left each other. The man who came to Gaili returned as a legendary hero, who had not only saved Lokaribale but also entire generations of fair maidens and Gaili village. Drimswang is still celebrated as the hero who put an end to human sacrifice for the sake of rescuing a beautiful woman from the clutches of an evil spirit. Though they may have lived apart, the story of their love lives on to this day. <laughs>